Welcome again to our EBMN 5 lesson series with Mr. Nyingera. In the previous module and lessons, we discussed how an organization could be organized into departments and how work could be delegated. Now that the organizational structure is in place, our focus is going to shift to bringing people into the organization to fill up the positions on the organizational structure, which is an aspect of staffing. In lesson four, therefore, we will discuss the process of human resources planning, which encompasses job analysis. We will explain what a job description and a job specification is before concluding the lesson with explaining job design and two methods typically used to redesign jobs, that is job enlargement and job enrichment. Now, lesson four is going to flow as follows. We start off with human resources planning, then we look at job analysis. Job analysis will result into two things, job description and job specification. Then we move on to job design. We are going to focus more on job enlargement and job enrichment. But first, we would need to define the term staffing. Staffing is a process for ensuring that at any time you have the right people to work and achieve your organizational objectives in terms of numbers and competence levels. So what it means, if you need 10 people, you should be able to 10 people. If you need people who are qualified accountants, you need to have people who are qualified accountants. Human resources planning. When you answer the following questions, you are involved in human resources planning. What jobs need to be done in the organization? Where and when exactly are they needed? How many people are needed to do the jobs? What skills do those people have? How many people will be needed in the future and with what skills? What vacancies will arise from transfers, resignations, death, and promotions, etc. Recruitment of workers. Recruitment is the process of finding and attracting people with needed skills, knowledges, and attitudes to fill vacant positions in the organization. Now, job analysis. This is an important part of the recruitment process. In other words, before you can embark on the recruitment process, you need to have conducted a job analysis. Right, what is a job analysis? Now, job analysis involves collecting all the information pertaining to a job, what the job involves and how it can be organized for increased worker productivity equipment and tools and health and safety information concerning the job, number of times activities are performed, link of job with other jobs and reporting structure, qualifications, experience and competences needed. Like for example, if you need to, to employ a feature, right, you will need to describe the work of the fitter, what the fitter will come and join the organization to do. What tools will the fitter expected to use? That is machinery. If he's supposed to use a lathe machine, for example, you need to indicate that so that the person can be able to evaluate himself or herself before he comes to the organization. In terms of safety and health, people should be aware of the health implications of joining the organization. So, if, for example, if you don't need, if you need someone, if someone is asthmatic, for example, you might indicate that uh, the environment is going to be a dusty environment. 
so that can people can make choices as to whether they are able to work within those environments or they cannot be able to. The number of times, like for example, you can say daily the activity has got to be done, the person has got to be producing reports on a weekly basis, all that information has got to be compiled. And when you talk about links with other jobs, for example, you are saying, okay, if you are coming in as a bookkeeper, you are going to be reporting to the financial accountant. You are going to be liaising with the finance, uh, the marketing department, for example, maybe on a weekly basis or monthly basis or daily basis. You are going to be liaising with HR, for example, information, sharing information to do with um, the number of hours that workers have worked so that you can be able to calculate their salaries and so forth. And then you need to mention things like the qualifications that are required and the experiences. For example, a diploma in financial management for a bookkeeper, things like that. Now, having conducted a job analysis, you are supposed to come up with two uh, documents. One document contains what is called the job description. This is basically a description of the job itself. Then the job specification describes the person who is qualified to do the job. What does the person have in terms of qualification, in terms of experience and so forth? We are going to move on and discuss those things in the next slide. Job description. Is the, the job description has got the following components. One, job identification, like job title, ESG, production supervisor, job summary, responsibilities, duties, authorities, relationships with other jobs, equipment, machines, tools, working conditions, technical jargon, and so forth. Now, when you talk about, the, for example, the content of the job, or like, for example, job title, First of all, the job description document must describe the job title. It must be short, definite, and suggestive of the nature of the job. When we talk about the job summary, you are saying in brief, what does the job entail? So a job summary is actually a short summary of the tasks to be performed by the employee. Then the duties with job description document should include the percentage of time that is devoted to the performance of each task. Then when we talk about the equipment, machinery, and tools, and so forth, the equipments, machines, tools to be used in the job should be written in the job description document, and so forth. And then uh, we move on to job specification. Job specification is a description of the candidate suitable for the job in terms of the skills requirement, the knowledge that the person is to be having, intelligence levels, experience, training, sense of responsibility, initiativity, communication ability. All those describe what is called the job specification. Then we move on to job design. With regards to work to be done, what in other words, what work has to be done? Why? Why should that work has to be? Why should that work be done? Who should do the job? And when should it be done? Where exactly should it be performed? And how should it be performed? When you answer those questions, you are actually involving yourself in job design. Now we are going to look at job enlargement and job enrichment. There are other methods that can be used to redesign jobs like for example job rotation flexi time and so forth now job enlargement is horizontal expansion of duties and tasks across the same organizational level uh, i can give an example of um, maybe a receptionist the receptionist's job is to be receiving calls and sending out calls but sometimes the receptionist can be given some other activities, for example, uh, typing and so forth. That's not promotional, it's actually at the same level as maybe a typist. But then, by giving the receptionist such tasks, you are actually making the receptionist's job more meaningful and more motivational. Then, uh, job enrichment then is the 
vertical expansion of the roles, responsibilities, authority, and activities. In this case, what you are basically doing is you are taking the responsibilities and the duties from a superior and you are giving some of them to a subordinate. The subordinate will feel like motivated, it's more like delegation. They will be motivated, feels that he's doing something more meaningful. And because of that, he or she will tend to like the job, to enjoy the work environment and so forth. So by simply doing that, you have not adjusted the salaries and stuff, but you have just made those changes. Someone can actually be more productive as a result of uh, that activity. Now we have come to the end of our lesson. To conclude, we have just come to the end of our first lesson in Module 5, right? We discussed the process of human resources planning, which encompasses job analysis. We went on to explain what a job description and a job specification were before concluding the lesson with explaining job design and two methods typically used to redesign jobs, that is job enlargement and job enrichment. Now in the next lesson, that is lesson five, we are largely going to focus on the process of recruitment and conclude with performance appraisal. Thank you.